Hi, right, welcome to Rock and Metal Invasion. My name is Steve. Coming up on the show today, we're doing a album battle, album battles. It's going to be 80s Survivor versus 80s Night Ranger. And I've got Tim Derling here to help me. How are you going, Tim? I'm doing really, really good, Steve. And I, this this is going to be an enjoyable one because, I mean, we're, we're talking about a lot of great music here. Two, two great bands. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they've got, I mean, they're both quite similar as far as they've got some platinum albums, they've had some hit singles, um, similar sound. Um, and yeah, we're just going to focus on the 80s. I mean, for Survivor, that's pretty much it. Night Ranger have sort of reformed and been putting out albums recently as well. Uh, but we're just going to focus on the 80s and we're just going to focus on five albums from the 80s. Now, Survivor had a couple of albums before night rangers debut album so we're not going to count the first two survivor albums we're going to pick it up from eye of the tiger so it's going to be eye of the tiger versus dawn patrol to, as our first matchup and then we'll go all the way through to man in motion versus the the basically the the final survivor album that they, they do do another one later on but the one the only one we're going to do to cover today the final one we're going to cover today too hot to sleep so so five album matchups we'll just we'll, we won't go into too much detail because um Obviously, it's a lot of albums to talk about, but we'll just sort of talk about our, our favorite tracks from each album. And if we had to decide what was better, you know, who will, who will, what album we would choose over the two albums that have been matched up. So um, I know Tim's talked about both those bands on his channel, Tim's Final Confessions. Make sure you check that channel out. Awesome channel. Um, I know he's talked about uh, both those bands a, a little bit on his channel, but um, so. Do you want to start us off uh, just with maybe some your your feelings about the bands and then maybe in your history with them and then maybe uh, kick us off with either Tiger versus uh, Dawn Patrol? Great. Yeah, um, I definitely would have heard of Survivor first because I the Tiger was yeah. just everywhere. You know, it, it's pop culture. Yeah. You can't you you couldn't escape that song in 1982. And it's um it's one of the first rock songs I remember really liking as a kid. I would have been eight years old when that song was out, but you hear it once, you forget it. And as many times as I've heard it, I still think it's a really good song. So that says a lot about the strength of the song that it could hold up to multiple listens and you hear it everywhere, right? It's yeah. just, like I said, it's pop culture. It's it's bigger than the band itself. There are more people that know I Have the Tiger than know who Survivor is. Yeah. So, you know, that's a blessing and a curse because I, I think that more people, there are probably those who think of Survivor as a one-hit wonder, which is absolutely not the case. Mm. And if you think that way, you you need to get out of that and remember, you know, if you were growing up in the 80s or even if you didn't, you know, do a little research. They had, you know, about a dozen mm. pretty well-known songs from really big hits that weren't Eye of the Tiger. So, mm. um, but the album itself... Um, yeah, it came out in 1982. Of course, I've got this uh, lovely nice. eight track version of it, but yeah. it's a cool cover. I mean, if you, you can't really see it here, but on the record, if you look in the in the eyes, you can see the the uh, you know the the reflection of the band, and that's reflected on the back cover. Of course, there's no back cover to this. It's just uh, you know basically the song titles. But yeah, I mean, you know, because it had "Eye of the Tiger" on it. Um, this was a popular album it was a platinum album now there was another top 20 single from this album called american heartbeat it reached number 17 on billboard i don't ever remember hearing the song on the radio i didn't know about it until i bought a greatest hits cd by survivor in 1993. um interesting song there's no guitar in it it's all keyboards and drums as far as i could tell even the synth the, even the bass is synth bass but it's catchy but there are some really good songs on here. Probably my favorite song on I Have the Tiger is Feels Like Love, the second song. It's a really catchy, upbeat, fast one. Uh, Hesitation Dance is really good. I like the one that really matters. Um, it's good. It, you know, it's a really good album. It's not my favorite Survivor album, but it's it's really good. And, you know, this is one that if you're crate digging, record shopping, it's worth picking up. It probably won't set you back too many dollars. Pick mm -hmm. it up and add it to your collection. And, uh, you know, do, are we rating these albums? 
You can if you want to, but um, it's just basically just choosing really of of the two. You know what? What's okay. Your, yeah. Well, then I'll wait. I'll wait till we talk about both before I, I give you my preference. But I really do like this album. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Well, I'll tell you what, Tim. Do you want to just uh, go on now and talk about Night Ranger and Dawn Patrol, and then just let us okay. know what your what sure. your what your pick is? Yep. Sure. Um, yeah, Dawn Patrol. That I, I was not aware of Night Ranger in 1982, um, but it was their debut album. And actually, this copy I got here just to. It's the Rock Candy reissue, which I highly recommend because it sounds so good. Um, because the early uh, MCA CDs are pretty quiet, not the best sounding, but you yeah. know, regardless, however you get it, this is a band that like this is their debut album, but it doesn't sound like a debut album. Mm -hmm. It sounds very, very accomplished. Now, all of these guys in the band had prior experience. Um, you know, Jack Blades and Brad Gillis were both in a band called Rubicon, um, which also included Kelly Kagi for a very brief moment. Um, Alan Fitzgerald, the keyboard player, was in Montrose with Sammy Hagar, and then he went on to be in Sammy's solo band. Uh, Jeff Watson, I can't remember where Jeff came from, but the five of them were were like, they were, you know, they weren't old, but they were veteran musicians. And it really sounds like it because this album is completely arrived there's none of that the the quirks you get with the first or second album with the band this is a fully realized debut it's got one of my favorite songs of all time in the opener don't tell me you love me that was a minor top 40 single the video got a lot of play on mtv which helped um sing me away was the other single from this album it's fantastic call my name is a great ballad that doesn't get enough attention it's a darker kind of ballad it's not really a sappy sappy type of ballad it's just really really good uh this album is surprisingly heavy mm. when you think of night ranger eddie's coming out tonight to rock and tune play rough is great and the song night ranger which is the final song in the album has a really fast part in the middle of it and one of the things of course they were known for was brad gillis and jeff watson's guitar interplay mm -hmm. great guitar playing all over this album the twin lead vocals of jack blades and Kelly Kagey. Um, I just think this album is a perfect, perfect debut. And um, even, I, I like the Survivor album, but this one's got to get my nod. It's just so good. And sadly, if I had it on 8-Track, I would show you, but it's really hard to find, although it does exist. Yeah, so um, thanks for that, Tim. Um, yeah, basically, uh, my experience with uh, Survivor and Night Ranger didn't sort of happen until later on. So, I, I, yes, I heard Eye of the Tiger, um, you know, of course, in the 80s, but um as far as getting into both bands it actually sort of happened a bit later on listening to their albums so um and also here in new zealand i don't know if it's because it's a they had sort of a quite an american sort of a sound or they're just translating over here they 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 didn't seem to be as popular as they were perhaps in america but um yeah so anyway let's let's have a look at eye of the tiger so yeah um obviously the the title tracks are classic this this eye of the tiger is actually my it's my alarm it's my the song that goes off each morning when i wake up so it's my alarm song right so uh it's kind of like yeah come on get hyped up for the day you know of course it's the classic song for the the boxing match you know that rocky does um and you know like like you said tim it's it's been played on radio a million times but it still sounds good to me. I'm not sick of it. Um, I don't think my wife likes it, but that's okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, it's, uh, yeah, I just love it. It's, it's a classic song. And I, I remember thinking back in the 80s, what a good song it was, but I had a feeling, oh, but none of their other songs are as good as that. So I think that was one of the reasons I, I kind of didn't really get into them. Uh, but yeah, this probably, to be honest, this is the, it, for me, it's the best song on this album. They are at times not perhaps as heavy as what I'd, Sort of like them to be or i prefer their heavier songs but you know you talked about american heartbeat i never even realized that there were no guitars on that song but now that you said that it's like it's, yeah I, but i really like that song i think that's a good song and, and children of the night's also my one of my go-to songs on here um but um yeah it's a it's a solid album i would like i say i think like for me i would have liked a few more songs like eye of the tiger but um yeah it's still a good album um, and you talk about uh, Dawn Patrol. Now, like you said, pretty heavy album. This is uh, 
maybe maybe one of their heaviest albums. Um, and also, like you said, they don't sound like this is their first album. They sound like a real pro band coming out with such a great sound. Um, production's really good. I mean, this came out in 1983, I think. Um, and it's sort of like, you know, this was pre-hair metal, but this, this is like um, a bit of a template for what a lot of those hair metal bands uh, are going to do, you know? It's catchy, it's commercial. Never had their time. Yeah, it's uh, still rocks though. Hits there some, you know. You've got like you say, you've got two guitar players in the band. I sometimes think people, um, because of things songs like Sister Christian, think, oh, this band's not, you know, they're a bit, they're a bit soft. But you know, they, they, their, 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 their heavy songs are, are pretty rocking. And um, you know, Sing Me Away, that's a great song. It's one of my, that's probably my favorite Night Ranger song to be honest with you. Great song. Um, but it's also got Don't Tell Me You Love Me. Um, Eddie's coming out tonight. Another great one. Um, yeah, I even like the the song Night Ranger. Yeah, that, that finishes the album. That's really good. So um, yeah, really really good album. So yeah, for me, it's going to be Dawn Patrol. It's going to be Dawn Patrol over I the Tiger. Um, and it's a pretty easy win, I've got to say. But um, again, not putting down I the Tiger, but just too many good songs on this one. And um, yeah, so uh, that's my pick. So we're both uh, both picking Dawn Patrol for the first one. I, I would say, Steve, probably another reason that that they, you know, didn't get much attention where you are is I, I would imagine that back in the day, at least, and maybe to this day, they might have never ever played there. And oh yeah, sometimes for sure. makes a big difference too. Yeah, uh, yeah, and, and and it really is a case of yeah, they they. They didn't even play. I mean, Canada, we're just north of them, and they hardly ever play up here either. Okay. So, Caught in the Game is an interesting one. Um, this is what it looks like. Oh, I trick. And, and uh, yeah, this is, so as far as I know, this is the last one that, that, that came up. And the blue, I should mention, the blue band around here, um, that's just the Columbia House. That's not on the record or the, the anything else, but it kind of goes with the cover. But, yeah. Um, this album is interesting because I didn't know this album existed until the year 2000. I did not know that mm. there was a night rate or a, sorry, a survivor album between I the tiger and vital signs until 2000. And I grew up in the eighties listening to the radio. That's how much this album tanked. Mm. And the only reason I learned that there was an album was because I got a, a book that was a guide to 45 picture sleeves, like, 45s with with picture artwork and it had caught in the game listed as a 45 from 1983 and i thought what is that so then i you know looked around and discovered oh there's a there's a survivor album i didn't know about mm. and it's really surprising because i mean they're coming off of a platinum album and they're coming off like a number one song that was like number one around the world and you know survivor eye the tiger was everywhere just one year previous and then they put this album out and the title song peaked at number 87 on billboard the album did not do well it disappeared it was out of print it's the last album they did with um vocalist dave bickler he had vocal issues vocal nodes so uh, he had to be replaced but um it's a shame because there's nothing wrong with this album. It's actually a really good Survivor album. And mm -hmm. the title song is a rocking song for Survivor. It's a fast, uh, it's a really fast song. Um, really catchy. Got a great chorus. There's other songs on here that are great too. Um, Half Life, I really like on this one. One of my favorites is the song Slander, which is the second to the last track on here. That's kind of a slow I don't want to say heavy, but it's heavy for Survivor. Um, and uh, it's got some great backing vocals on it from Kevin Cronin from Mario Speedwagon. And it's got some cool guitar solos in it. The, one of the differences between Survivor and Night Ranger is that Survivor had one guitarist and, and Night Ranger had two. Sometimes Jim Peterick would play guitar, but most of the time he played keyboards. But um, Jackie Don't Go, that's a catchy one. I think that was a single too. Um, doesn't have to be this way yeah it this is a good album it it uh it completely disappeared and you you don't see it that much out there used i've seen it once on vinyl and that's the one time i bought it but mm. it's a worthy album it's worth checking out mm. um 
Night Ranger, on the other hand, their second album, Midnight Madness, came out, I think, in October of 83. And as you'll see, this has the blue band around it, too, like the Survivor one. This is just what Columbia House did with some of their their uh, their albums. But uh, this was the one that changed everything for Night Ranger. Of course, it had Sister Christian, which is when I first became aware of Night Ranger, probably summer of 84. I remember hearing this song on the radio. And like Eye of the Tiger, I'm not tired of it. I, mm. I, 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 I've I never been sick of listening to Sister Christian, but this album is full of good songs. You can still rock in America. That was their big anthem. It was a minor hit. When You Close Your Eyes was a top 20 single. Really good song. Um, as far as like heavier ones on here, I guess it would be um, probably Touch of Madness, probably the most rocking song on here. Great acoustic ballad on this called Let Him Run, which should have probably been a single. Rumors in the Air, another favorite. They still do that one in concert mm. live. Uh, this this is just a nine nine good songs for nine songs on the album. This mm. one just goes from strength to strength. And worth picking up on vinyl so you can pick out all of the crazy characters in the background on both the front and the back of this album, which you do not get uh, simply, uh, mm. certainly not on the eight track. So. Uh, once again, if it sounds like I'm going to go with Night Ranger, it's because I am. Caught in the Game is a worthy album, worth rediscovering because it was pr pretty much forgotten when it first came out. But Midnight Madness is an all-time classic, so I've got to give the nod to Midnight Madness. Okay, awesome. All right, cool. Thanks, Tim. Um, yeah, I think we're, so far, we seem to be on a similar page. But um, anyway, we'll see how it goes. So, um, yeah, you're absolutely right about Caught in the Game, you know, um, I think they they rushed this out, you know. They should have taken a little bit more time. And, um, you know, looking at sort of... I know that back in those days, albums did come out a lot more regular, but it, it just it did come out very quickly um, after, you know, I, the Tiger. And, yeah, maybe they just didn't, didn't quite have the songs there um, that they could have had if they'd taken a little bit more time. Just also give people a little bit more time to sort of digest the band and... Um, you know, uh, I the Tiger had been so huge, you would have thought that next albums is going to take them to the next level, which is what often would happen, right? You had a big hit, a band gets their breakthrough, and then the next album's just as big sometimes. So, um, they've got their momentum, but yeah, it's kind of weird that this one sort of just disappeared because you would have thought after I the Tiger it would have been bigger, yeah. So, I mean, you're right, it's hard to find this one a little bit actually. Called this is called The Game of Vinyl, I had, to, I had to do a bit of searching to get it. Um, for me, Slander is the go-to song. It's such a great song, and I know I've heard you talk about it before on your channel as well, that you like it. Great song. Um, Jackie Don't Go is also very good. Um, in fact, all the songs on side one I like, and then on side two, Slander is excellent. Um, but, yeah, I just uh, I think um, probably didn't have the big hit on it that uh, that they needed. Um yeah, Eng engineered too by Mike Clank, who goes on, of course, to work with uh, Guns N' Roses. But... That's right. Yeah, that's an early that's an early appearance of his. Yeah, but I think for this for their first well for this album and um uh, maybe the previous album as well, Frankie Sullivan does the production. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, and, you know, it sounds good. But um, yeah, I think you compare it to Night Ranger. Um, again, you know, they're coming out off. Um, their debut album but they probably hadn't had the big hit yet that they do actually get on this album so yeah sister christian was massive for them um and again though too i sometimes wonder to them you know when these bands have these big hits then it almost like labels them as this sort of ballad type band you know and uh you know maybe then we see later on where the success kind of goes down a little bit um because maybe they're not looked at as as a sort of a as a heavy band but um yeah de definitely uh like you say too it's a good song i i i don't love sister christian but i don't, yeah, I, I still don't mind hearing it um again like i was saying was saying before night ranger aren't a band that they actually got a lot of airplay here in new zealand so um i'm not sick of it it hasn't been overplayed too much down here but yeah rock in america rumors in the air two good rocking songs to kick it off um and actually you're talking about um uh, you know ballads i actually really like when you close your eyes as well on the songs really on this album it's really good as well so um yeah it's 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 probably a closer matchup for me than the previous um previous one but i'm going to go with um like you i'm going to go with midnight madness sure yeah so um 
what's really remarkable, I think, about Survivor is that usually when a band has an album that doesn't do very well, like Caught in the Game, does a band regain that momentum? They can't get up there again. But Survivor did. Um, they, uh, they, so Dave Bickler, their original singer, had to leave. He eventually came back later. And he was replaced by the singer Jimmy Jameson, who was in, he'd been in a couple of bands. He was in a band called Target. Uh, in the late seventies, but he yeah. had most recently been in, in a in a heavy uh, like a hard rock band called Cobra, uh, which were on Epic Records. But he was out of that band, and so they got in touch with him, and he successfully auditioned. And the first thing that I think most of the world got to hear from this band was a soundtrack song. They did lots of soundtrack songs, but this one wasn't on any album. They they did it for the uh, first Karate Kid movie, the song called "The Moment of Truth." But in the fall of 1984 survivor released this album vital signs and honestly i don't know why this album isn't talked about as much as albums like journey escape or foreigner four or ario speedwagon high infidelity this is a melodic rock classic of the 80s this was a double platinum album it had several hit singles off it and the hit singles are amazing i can't hold back high mm -hmm. on you the search is over um First Night is a great fast one. The This whole album is really good. And that's, you didn't always get that with Survivor. You got like three or four really, really strong songs that were usually mm -hmm. the singles and the rest were just okay. The album tracks on this are, these mm -hmm. every single one of the songs there could have been a single. Popular Girl is great. Everlasting is a great power ballad. Probably my favorite song on here, maybe other than I Can't Hold Back, is Broken Promises. Um it's just fantastic. And Jimmy Jameson, like he's sadly he passed away. Mm -hmm. He was so amazingly good. He just opened his mouth and he sounded good. He just couldn't help but sound amazing. Yeah. And he, he was perfect for this material. He was perfect for this material. And uh so a couple million sold and rightfully so, but they, they got the momentum back, and very rarely do bands do that. So um yeah, this album took them through you know 84 and most of 85, then of course. They ended off 85 with my personal favorite Survivor song, which is Burning Heart from uh, Rocky IV, which isn't on any one Survivor album. Mm, but, mm. It, you know, it sounds like it could have come off of this album. But, mm. yeah, I mean, they were on a roll with this, and uh, which is why this particular matchup is going to be very, very tough for me. Mm. So uh, Midnight Madness didn't really start to click until 84. So Night Ranger were on tour, and, you know, that took them from yeah. that year. But then in May of 85... The third Night Ranger album, Seven Wishes, comes out. Yeah, th this is the last eight track for Night Ranger. Uh, it's actually easier to find these than it is to find Dawn Patrol. Figure that out. Uh, okay. Hmm. I think it's because of the whole label change. I think that has uh, something to do with it. But anyway, yeah. Um, I can still remember, like, by this time, um, I was actively listening to Top 40 Radio. So I remember Sentimental Street when it was a new song, and I, I've loved it ever since. Like, what is that? That's amazing. And I was like, oh, it's the same band that sings that Motorin song. Okay, I get it. And uh, yeah, Four in the Morning, Top 20 single, Goodbye, fantastic ballad, another Top 20 single. This was a platinum album. This has some rocking stuff on it, like This Boy Needs to Rock, uh, Night Machine, Faces, uh, I Need a Woman. Like, this This is a great album from start to finish. I've got... I, I, I got to give this album a nod over the Survivor album, but it's close. It's very, very close because both both of these are fantastic. Like, these are both mm. like pretty mm. darn near equal albums. So, mm. but Night Ranger gets the slight nod. I'm, I've listened to it for longer. Um, yeah. Not, e that, not an easy decision there. Very, very close. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, cool. All right, excellent. Thanks, Tim. Yeah, this is this is a. In fact, it's interesting. Like for me, uh, it, it's it's a. A lot of them are very uh, tough calls, and some of them are really close. Um, and no matter what the score ends up, you know, it could just be, you know, a very minute difference. Um, but yeah, so let's talk about uh, vital signs. Like again, I think we're on the same page here, Tim. Um, yeah, I don't know why this isn't talked about more. Uh, it's for me, the the one Survivor album where the whole thing's fantastic. I just I play it from start to finish, and I'm not like, oh yeah, no, this one this song's only okay. Uh, everything's really good. Um, you know, I what I um, often do is uh, I will take songs that I like and I'll 
convert them into MP3s or download them as MP3s and put it on my, you know, um, phone or something like that. I, but I only do the songs I really like. And for this album, it's like everything, you know. So um, that's what kind of helps. And sometimes this helps me when I'm doing these kind of ranking shows or something. I just go and have a look. Oh, what are the songs I've downloaded onto my phone from this album? And kind of, oh, there's only three or four from this album. This one's got pretty much everything. Um, yeah, all the songs you talked about, fantastic. Um, I really like, actually, I really like Popular Girl. I think that's a really catchy song, really good. Uh, it's a singer, not the song, very good. Um, High on You, fantastic. Can't hold back. Um, yeah, it's it's a it's a shame that um, Moment of Truth isn't on here. Um, yeah, but uh, because I, I mean, gosh, that would have just. It's already a great album, but it just would have been nice to have that on there. I think you can actually get it on the Japanese uh, vinyl version, which is interesting. Probably. it's. I, I've got it on a Greatest Hits CD, so it, yeah. it's available. Yeah. I've got, it on, a, I've got a Greatest Hits CD. The, actually, the Karate Kid soundtrack was on Casablanca, believe it or not. So it could uh, have been a label for him. Could be, yeah. Yeah. And it happens again, too, doesn't it, with Burning Heart? Because I don't think that's not on an album. Burning, Burning Heart should have been, unless you get the Rock Candy version yeah. of the next album. Yeah, Burning Heart should have been on. That's the problem when they put the song out, you know, m months after yeah. and then months before another album. Yeah. It wasn't associated with an album, but. Yeah, and I think that's probably, I mean, this album, like you say, did do well because it had quite a few hits on it. But um, yeah, just imagine that, you know, Moment of Truth on here. Um, yeah, it might have even done better. And I think as and well. And what a comeback after it caught in the game. Like, yes, absolutely. Amazing. Because it's very... A new singer, first time with yeah. the band. And they Absolutely. don't love that good. It's very rare. Like usually like a band will have success. They either maintain that success and they might fade away. But to have some success and then like have a bomb, often you'd say, Well, it's over for these guys now. They're probably not and, gonna and change and change singers. Yeah, and change singers, I mean, yeah. It, yeah. it didn't uh, I mean when, when Bobby Kimball left Toto, that never had another big album like Toto Four after mm. that. Mm. And uh yeah, usually you change the quiet riot. I mean that yeah. was it. So and it's all I guess the good thing is it happened pretty quickly. This is 84, so they didn't muck around. That's right. Um and so people really didn't know who Yeah. Some people maybe didn't even know. Right. Anyway. Yeah, I yeah, didn't yeah. initially realize when uh I think the first yeah, when Moment of Truth and then High and You and all those songs came. I didn't realize it was a different singer than the guy that sang Eye of the Tiger. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now like, of course I can pick them apart, but very similar. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I thought it was Jimmy Jamison on By the Tiger. It's like, oh, no, it's, it was a different guy, right? But, um, yeah, so, and of course, too, because, you know, Jimmy's doing a lot of these other Rocky songs and the Karate Kid songs, so you just think, oh, it was it was him that had done the other one. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, uh, very good album. But the interesting thing is, too, you know, um, Night Ranger, Seven Wishes, they also put out a really good album. And again, like I'm saying, you know, when I go through the albums and I'm picking out my, my sort of songs that I want to um, sort of have on my phone, uh, there's heaps from this album as well. So it's a real tight one. Um, you know, Seven Wishes and Faces, the, the two of the songs that start off, are really good songs. I really, uh, really like those ones. Um, even the Ballad Sentiment Sentimental Street, I actually do like that one. Boy Needs to Rock, um, yeah, that's a really cool rock song. Um, Interstate Love Affair, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. It's a tight one, but actually I am going to go with Survivor on this one, Tim. Um, just because you can't go wrong though with either of them, so yeah, you can't. You I can't agree with you, wrong, <laughs> but I, 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 for me, it's just because on that Vital Signs album, I just, I just put it on, and it's just from start to finish. Um, but yeah, it's all good. So, um, so there we go. I've given one for Survivor. So, um, uh, we're gonna move on now to When Seconds Count versus uh, Big Life. Interesting thing too about Seven Wishes, it did have a soundtrack song on Interstate Love Affair. Interstate Love Affair mm -hmm. was originally on. The Teachers soundtrack uh, that came out in 84, that also had uh, 38 Specials, Teacher, Teacher. So, um, but if you get, I don't know if that's available on CD, it probably is from Japan, but if you get the Teacher soundtrack and you listen to Interstate Love Affair on there, and then you listen to it on Seven Wishes, they're slightly different versions. Oh. Very similar. One, It's a great song. It's a great mm -hmm. driving song, mm -hmm. um, but they're, they're slightly different versions. A little bit of trivia. Yeah. Um, so yeah, 1980. Uh, so now we're into 1986, and uh, Survivor puts out when seconds count. I, I've always liked this cover. I don't know if it's supposed to be some sort of elaborate clock or what, but it's kind of cool. Mm. Um, yeah, this came out late '86. Now 
The surprising thing was this album did not even go gold, even though it had a top 10 single. And one of the best Survivor singles is This Love, was the the, the their last big song that came off of here. But this whole album is amazing. Um, earlier today, when I was, you know, was thinking about getting ready for this episode, the song that kept playing in my head was Man Against the World. I just thought that's that's such a good it's such a good ballad. It's not a love ballad. It's just a really really good slow song. I believe that song was also written for Rocky IV. It was inspired uh, by by the the character, but I don't think mm. it made the soundtrack. And it wasn't the single, but Rebel Sun is really good. Um, Oceans, I really like that one. Backstreet Love Affair, In Good Faith should have been a hit ballad. Can't Let You Go, they stuck one of my favorite songs in the very end of the album. Um, the only thing about the, the, the opener, How Much Love, is a good song, but it's almost like they tried to rewrite High On You. It's very, very similar to High On You, but I still mm -hmm. like it. Like, I, you mm -hmm. know, this is ear candy to me, right? Mm -hmm. um, and the title song is another one of my favorites. And oddly enough, you know, we're talking about Night Ranger, and survivor if you listen to when seconds count uh on the bridge you can very clearly hear tommy shaw singing oh, the background yes. vocal. so you got tommy shaw on one album and jack blades on the other long yeah. before there was such a thing with damn yankees so um yeah when seconds count really good album i mean to me it just picks up where vital signs left off what yeah. would have solidified this album is if they'd have stuck burning hard on it yeah that would have that would have made it you know yeah just right and um one thing we haven't talked about either um when Seconds Count and Vital Signs, Ron Neverson, uh, producer as well. So they, they yeah. brought him on. Yeah. And he was having massive yeah. su massive success about this time, wasn't he, with Hard and... Hard and Ozzy and, and then... Yeah. He, yes, and Europe. And he mm -hmm. was on a hot streak as far as mm -hmm. being an in-demand producer. Mm -hmm. And oddly enough, um, Ron Neverson was originally uh, approached to produce this album. Oh, right. But he was tied up. Ron Nevison would eventually produce both the Damn Yankees albums and Night yeah. Rangers comeback album Neverland. So he did work with them eventually. Mm -hmm. And he worked with Jack Blades quite a bit. Yeah, two years between albums was kind of a long time. And, you know, you got forgotten about. Um, and this album didn't come out until early 1987. And this album went gold. It uh, didn't go platinum like the last two had. Mm. I think that... Um, and it, this this album actually ended up, you know, still a big producer. They had uh, Kevin Elson uh, produce this, who worked with Europe and 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 Journey, and you know, mm -hmm. was a big name producer, right? Yeah. Um, I think this is a pretty good album. I think that uh, they put a lot of hope that the secret of my success was going to be this great big blockbuster hit single. It was from a Michael J. Fox movie. He was one of the biggest actors in the world at the time. From being on Family Ties and the Back to the Future and Teen Wolf and uh, it the movie did okay but the song didn't click. I like it, you know. It's very mm -hmm. '80s soundtracky sounding, yeah. but that's not a bad thing. I don't yeah. necessarily think. But um, well, not at the top, really right? Have... It, ca it ca comes out in the '80s. It sound doesn't sound '80s because well, you know what I mean. It's like no one. It, it sounds yeah. a bit dated. Yeah. Sounds a bit dated now, but at, like at the time, yeah. You didn't think anything of it. No. And that song was actually, it's the only song in here that was produced by David Foster. So it had that, mm -hmm. that, that sheen, that sheen mm -hmm. over it. But they still came up with good songs. I mean, the title song is great. Color of Your Smile, Love is Standing Near. I love um, Carry On. That's one of my favorites on this album. Better Let It Go is a kind of a different kind of ballad that I've always really liked. Follow Up to Secret of My Success. They put out Hearts Away, which was another ballad and didn't chart very high. Um, I do like this album, and I do want to mention that if you get this album, uh, take a look at the copy of it you have, because there's two different um, versions of the cover. And the difference being, on some versions of it, there's more stuff in the background. So it's the same photo of the group, but there's just more There's more in the background. Oh, yeah, mine's a bit different to yours. Yeah. You've got it, yeah. I think that's what my CD looks like. So yeah, if you look around the logo, it's it's mm. quite different. It's it's That's mm. kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. I never noticed that, Tim. I never knew that. So yes. uh, there we go. Let's well, for that information, I've I've got to give a shout out to uh, my friends at Fans oh, in Motion. Right. Yeah, the great. Ultimate Night Ranger podcast. That's where yeah. I learned that. I didn't know that before. Right. So, so that's it's cool pretty, that we each have a different. Pretty, it's pretty weird because it's quite subtle. It's not like a big difference, is it? Sort of like yeah. unusual. You'd almost have to have them side by side, or yeah. have like this. Have somebody pointed out. 
So yeah. in this case, um, even though I like both these albums, I'm giving the nod to Survivor One Second oh, Count. Right. That's my favorite of the two. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Thanks, Tim. Uh, all right. So um, yeah, When Seconds Count. So again, as we talked about, um, Ron Neverson production. Um, and I think it's really carrying on a lot from uh, Vital Signs. Uh, very similar. But for me, for whatever reason, and I'm not sure what it is because it does sound, very, the songs sound very similar. It just doesn't quite resonate with me quite as much as Vital Signs. There are some good songs on here. Um, is This Love is just instantly in my head. Very catchy. Um, really like that one. And Oceans, I think, is fantastic. Really good song. The rest is just not quite as catchy or quite as memorable for me as like on Vital Signs. I don't know why that is. Maybe I just need to even listen to this a little bit more, perhaps. But, um, you know, the thing is that, you know, sometimes things just grab you and sometimes they don't. So, um, you know, it's not a heavy album, but Vital Signs wasn't either. So that's not necessarily the criticism of it. Um, yeah, it would have been nice if it had um, Burning Heart on it. I think it probably needed just a few. I think for me, just it would have been nice to maybe have a, a few more up-tempo songs on here. But, you know, um, yeah, it's a solid album. Um, now, Big Life, a, a similar situation. I think this is a drop off a little bit for me from the previous album. Um, yeah, I do like um, The Color of Your Smile. Now, it was actually a, a single, it was the third single, I think, from the album. And one thing yeah. I learned, one thing I learned uh, from watching your channel, Tim, is uh, I had to go and get the single because there's a B side, Girls, yes, all like Girls it. All Like It, great yeah, song, which is great. great. Song. Really like yeah. this. So, but and it's the not color of your smile video was was done at the same time that Secret of My Success was. If you look, it's the same set. Right, right, yeah. Well, this is obviously the same photo shoot as well because they're pretty much. Yeah, like that's actually I think so, that pictures inside the album in black and white. I think. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, um, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if. Um, uh, I've got some other pictures here. Um, yeah, we're, we're from this sort of photo shoot. But um, yeah, anyway, going back to Big Life. Yeah, it's, again, I think it's, yeah, like Survivor, not as good as their previous album. Um, I do like Big Life. I think that's a really, that's a good rocking song to kick it off. Um, yeah, and like I said, Color of Your Smile. Uh, I, yeah, Hearts Away was, like you said, released as a single, but it just, yeah, uh, no, it doesn't really uh, do it for me. I do like Rain Comes Crashing Down. It's quite a long song. Um, some great guitar work at the end. Really awesome stuff. Um, and sec Secret of My Success, like, like you said as well, Tim, I think they were really hoping, you know, often the bands would get a lot of success uh, because they're associated with a movie, especially if the movie is successful. Um, and I think Michael J. Fox was pretty hot at the time, so... Um, but yeah, it didn't. You still got to have a decent song, and it's just an okay song, I think. So, um, yeah, but this one, it is actually very tight because I'm not a, I'm not a big fan of either album. It's, I like them, but not. I think it's for me, they're not as good. But I am going to go with Big Life just because um, just a few more songs on here that um, I prefer. So, um, and just the fact it's just that little bit heavier, um, I think I prefer this one. So yeah, I'm going to go with Night Ranger and Big Life. Interesting. See, for me, vital signs and when seconds count are just about equals. Oh, and yeah. The difference being is that I like Seven Wishes that much more than I like Big Life. But yeah, right. I forgot to mention that. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned the B side because they didn't do many of those. Um, um, and it's a it, Girls I Like It is a cool song. It's worth seeking out. It is a cool song. Yeah. Yeah. And like I say, thanks to you, Tim. I didn't know about it. And, but, and if you listen to that song, um, you'll hear where Jack borrowed. What song is it? You'll, if you listen to that song and you, and you know the first Damn Yankees album really well. Right, I don't know if it's Rock right. City, but he, there's, there's a section that you can tell he kind of, well, nobody's heard that B-side. Yeah. I'm going to use this part again. for. Totally. I, think it's Rock, I think it's Rock City on, on the first Damn Yankees album. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I know Wasp did, did that once too with one of their B-sides. They had a B-side and then they took that song and they put it on the Crimson Idol. Because, you know, yeah, like you say, bands go, oh, actually, they I hadn't quite had time to work on that song enough. So we've stuck it on the B side, but actually I, I think I've made this song better now, you know, and no one yeah. really will know. So, um, yeah. yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. All right. Um, so we've, we're, th we're, we're at three, one each, aren't we? I think. So you've gone for, 
Night Ranger three times and Survivor once, and I've done the same thing. So it is looking like it's going to be a Night Ranger victory, but let's see how it ends up. Final matchup, Too Hot to Sleep versus um, Man in Motion. This is really interesting because I'm going to hold both of these covers up at the same time yeah. because both of these albums came out right around the same time, like fall of 1988. Both of these album covers were done by Hugh Syme, and it almost looks like they were done at the same time because they're very, very similar. Like very it's almost similar. Like they, it's, it's almost like they, they're, they're, it's one photo that's just been kept, it's sliced, you know? And you could put yeah. them together. Yeah. It's, and, and even when you look at the way that the bands are pictured on the back covers, uh, even the song titles, even the way the song titles are written. Yeah. It's, it's really weird. It is. Um, Sadly, uh, neither of these albums were successful at all. They they both ended up in the cutout bins. Mm. And in both cases, oh my goodness, look at this. I don't know if you can see that very well, Steve, but look at the way that the titles and the band names are written on the sides of the sleeve. It's almost exactly the same font. If you put yeah. your two records together. Yeah, like, they are. They pretty much are, uh, yeah. And yet they're on different record labels um anyway mm. that's that's the type of thing that that'll throw me off that's just so yeah. weird um so um okay well i'll talk about um survivor first i'm not sure which one of these albums came out first i think they were very close um and uh you, you had mentioned about when seconds count not being particularly a like a heavy album like mm. most of the time you don't reach for survivor if you feel like listening to something heavy yeah. but i think people might be surprised at how rocking this album is uh this is actually a, a pretty tough sounding album um produced by frank filippetti and uh frankie sullivan frank filippetti is not a name that i recognize mm. i'm sure somebody out there knows it from something but um and you know even by 1988 even they're trying to you know put the hair up a little bit make them look a little bit more yeah you know i mean bon frankie, and... Uh, frankie sullivan looks completely different if you look at pictures from you know, like with the yeah. long blonde hair there from the spit from the, yeah. you know, the eyes of the eye of the tiger album. Yeah, it's really changed his look. Yeah, that yeah, Jim Peterick does not look comfortable at all. No, I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, and I should say, like you know, obviously there's only three of them out here, so it's a little bit like Journey with Raised on Radio. You know, the rhythm section's gone for whatever reason. Mm. Um, the drums on this album, though, are courtesy of one of my favorite mm. drummers, Mickey Curry. So he really yeah. adds a lot of bottom end to this album. She's a star is a heavy one that starts up. Yes, I said heavy. It's it's uh it's surprisingly uh surprisingly heavy song. Too hot to sleep is a rocker. Here comes desire. Um burning bridges is like a slow burning heavy one. Um I saw Survivor once live in 2006. And uh it was supposed to be Jimmy Jameson, but he he had left, even though the poster had him on it. But who who we ended up getting singing was Robin McCauley from uh, nice. from michael shankar and mm -hmm. he did a great job he didn't sound yeah. like dave bickler jimmy jameson but he did a great job it, it, yeah. i enjoyed it but they did burning bridges so i was surprised um the singles off of this desperate dreams that's pretty classic survivor sounding i, I really like that one uh didn't know it was love was uh, a single in a video yeah. and the way that that song starts out it kind of reminds me of, I'm going to reference Damn Yankees again, but it kind of sounds mm -hmm. like Coming of Age, that little sort of finger pick mm -hmm. riff at the beginning of. Good song. And uh, they had kind of a an adult contemporary hit with the song Across the Miles. But overall, it, it sank without a trace. Mm -hmm. And it, as far, yeah, it, like you said, they really, there's really only one other Survivor album they did reach in 2006, which is a good mm -hmm. album. It's decent enough. And if you, depending on where you get it, uh, Jimmy Jameson did an album in 99 called Empire. Oh, uh, yeah, true, true. And some yeah. versions of that say Jimmy Jameson's Survivor because yeah. he was going on a tour under that name. Mm. It's a pretty good album, too, but mm. they haven't been prolific. Unlike Night mm. Ranger, who mm. they put out all kinds of new music, and it's generally really, really good. Mm. But anyway, so Man in Motion came out, and um, once again, they have the curse of having hits with ballads. So the first single off of this was I Did It For Love, which was Night Ranger didn't do many songs that they didn't write or co-write. And this was mm. a Russ Ballard song. Mm. I like it, um, mm. but it, it sank. It didn't do very well. But there are some great songs in here. I mean, the title song is great. Again, a pared down lineup. 
Alan Fitzgerald mm. had left, yeah. even though he's on some of this album and co-wrote some of this album. It's very much more of a guitar-driven album, even though there are mm. still keyboards on it. Mm. Um, I love Reason to Be, Don't Start Thinking, um, Halfway to the Sun. I, I, I've i called this my favorite Night Ranger album, as crazy as that might sound. But mm -hmm. I think this is a gem that needs rediscovered by a lot of people. This is also one of the examples where they squished the logo. Mm. It should be more square. It should be uh, more yeah, light. yeah, yeah. So they took, <laughs> kind of did that to it. Um, of the two of them, I'm going to give the nod to Man in Motion by a pretty wide margin. This is still mm -hmm. worth checking out. So that's yeah. my opinion on the 88 album by both of these bands. Yeah. Do you think, Tim, um, the reason both those bands kind of changed their their lineup a little bit, or certainly changed their sound, was because of the influence of sort of what we might call hair metal now, like, you know, bands like um, Motley Crue and Bon Jovi and I I yeah, have a theory about, yeah I I totally agree with with you I I totally think that's the case I I think that um for bands like Night Ranger and um Survivor mm. and Thirty Eight Special mm. and Ario Speedwagon I think all of those bands influenced the bands like mm. Bon Jovi mm. like Death. Well, maybe not so much Def Leppard because they're mm. in, they're they're British, mm. but they paved the way. And, and along with people like Brian Adams and Loverboy, they paved the way for rock bands to get on the radio. Mm. So I don't think they ever get the credit for it, mm -hmm. and yet they ended up being overtaken by these bands. Mm. Even though I don't mm. think if it, it weren't for ba bands like this, a lot of these bands would never get on the radio the way that they did and mm. have. I mean, even all the way up to bands like Warrant and 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 Firehouse. I mean, the idea of having these big, big hit singles for a rock or a, mm. you know, a hard rock band, mm. I don't think it would have existed. But I also know that music goes in cycles. And by the late 80s, um, for bands like this, it just wasn't their time anymore. Yeah. And as true. time went on, they became classic rock. And that's yeah. why they can still go on the road. I mean, Survivors, I don't even know how active. I think Frankie Sullivan's the only guy that's still... Like, I don't know what kind of lineup it is. They're not doing any new music, but no. Night Ranger certainly is. And I saw them last year and they yeah, were fantastic. Yeah. And, they're, yeah, yeah. and they're more or less intact. It's still Jack and Kelly yeah. and Brad. So yeah. you've got the main guys and the, the band sounds fantastic. And, and Jack and Kelly still sing really well. So, but I think that it, it, they had to go through this period, break up for a little while, you know, uh, yeah. Jack did the two damn Yankees albums. A lot of bands um, did in the nineties, didn't they? A lot of those those bands from the eighties, they had to break up in the nineties and then come back. They had to they had to take a you know, they had to they had to take a breather for yeah. a while and say, yeah. Yeah, let's regroup, let's regroup a little bit later and see what happens. Yeah. Um but yeah, I mean I mean as far as like melodic rock music goes, it doesn't get much better than these two bands as far as I'm concerned. I mm -hmm. just happen to be a bigger Night Ranger fan, but these Survivor albums are all, mm -hmm. they're all really, these are all albums I listen to on a fairly regular basis. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. Yeah. So I'll, I'll briefly talk about uh, Too Hot to Sleep and Man in Motion as well. Um, yes. As, as we've, as Tim discussed, it, they definitely get a little bit heavier, both of them on this, uh, on these albums. Uh, I really like the first side. I think um, She's a Star, uh, Too Hot to Sleep. Didn't know it was live, which was one of the singles. I like that in rhythm of the city. You notice that that yeah, they're, they're definitely cranking up the guitars a lot more on this album. Um, I think it fades away a little bit on side two. Um, yeah, and I just think um, maybe these uh, the survivor at this point maybe aren't seen as um, the happening band uh, so much, and as some of these other bands now that are coming through, like you, you know, your Motley Crue's and Dawkins and Bon Jovi is there, the sort of bands that people are sort of grabbing, you know, going to more. But um, yeah, a good album though. I, like I say, I really, I much prefer side one for this one for this album. Um, Man in Motion. I'm not surprised, Tim. It's maybe your favorite Night Ranger album. I, I think it's a really underrated album. Um, Man in Motion, the the song that uh, kicks off side one. That's really heavy. I love the guitar uh, that kicks off on that one. Um, same with Halfway to the Sun as well. That kicks off side two. Really good song, quite heavy. Um, Reason to Be is very good song. Good songwriting. Um, Here She Comes Again is a great one. Interesting, that's actually uh, got a co-write with Michael Bolton on it. Um, but it's, it's you know, quite a good hard rock song. Um, yeah, Woman in Love. I did, a, I did it for love. 
uh, yeah, it's. I'm going to go with Man in Motion. Um, it's it's a little bit close, a little bit close. So I think I I like the fact that um, there's some good rocking songs on on both both these albums. But yeah, I'm going to go with uh, Man in Motion and uh, bit of a surprise, really. It kind of didn't get more attention because um, I think it, it had the sound that was happening at the time, um, and it's a good album. But um, yeah, interesting too that you know um, their keyboard player Alan Fitzgerald is is gone. Um, because there's still keyboards on this album, so I don't know. Yeah, they had other they had other people. Uh, they had other yeah, people they had another players. guy. One of them, one of them was a guy named Jesse Bradman who ended up doing the tour. Because if you ever get the album, the Live in Japan, that oh, came yeah. out in 1990, which is he's the keyboard player. He also went on to a band called Saints and Sinners, uh, which is a oh, Canadian okay. band. Yeah, yeah. If you're familiar yeah. with them, they did yeah. an album in '92. The singer was Rick Hughes, who used to be in the yeah. band Sword. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, Jesse Bradman went on to that band. Right, yeah, yeah. I guess um, maybe he was feeling, and and I can kind of get that with that album. It's there's, there's there is less keyboards on it, so maybe he was sort of feeling like it wasn't so much of a part of of the band, or wasn't needed so much. Um, yeah, I so that, that, I mean, it fits as they call him. Yeah, I mean, he's not a guy that does a lot of interviews. So you don't really know what yeah. he's up to. I do know he was probably older than the rest of those guys because, like I said, he went. He goes back like. He was on the Montrose Paper Money album. That's seventy four. So he was he was back there like before most of the rest of the guys were were recording. It's interesting too because like Man in Motion, I remember hearing I did it for love on the radio once. I don't mm -hmm. remember hearing or seeing anything about that Survivor album. So it was almost like caught in the game again. It right. just disappeared. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think too maybe fits. He doesn't really have the look, does he? If you have a look, you know, he's not really got the... Yeah. the if they were going for that sort of hair metal look, I don't know if he's going to embrace that. Uh, I don't know what they could have done with it. I mean, he kind of had a cool look <laughs> with the beret and the glasses. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's funny because, I, you know, if you look at him on uh, uh, on the cover of Midnight Madness, he's got like the medical... Like he's yes. got the blue, right? Yes, it, yes, so he yes. almost looks like the guy that was in the Prince and the Revolution, his keyboard right. player, because right. he dressed like that too. yeah. yeah. Just an, another little random thing. I um, when I first saw this album and I hadn't really got into Night Ranger, I thought this guy was the frontman. I thought he because he's sitting in the middle. There's uh, Jeff Watson, right? But um, yeah, yeah. I, if you go through and you look at some of the covers, Jeff's often in the front, uh, in the in the middle, which is unusual because usually it's the the singer. But um, anyway, that's just something I noticed. It's also unique too because you had uh, two guitar players, neither of whom sang. The bass yep. player and the drummer sang. Mm. You know, it was a different kind of lineup. It was almost yeah. like, um, well, you, you know, when you talk about the the uh, man in motion, you know, if you had Jack singing all the songs, it would be like Thin Lizzy. You had a bass player that sang, two guitar players and a drummer. Mm. Yeah, but see, the thing is, too, I I find I find it a little bit annoying that I don't know who's doing the singing. To be honest, you know, like you've got to be able to work out. Because it doesn't say anywhere. It just says Kelly's lead vocals and Jack's lead vocals, but I don't know. Yeah. Oh, and... see, to me, I can I can tell them apart instantly. But oh, I mean, can if you? you listen yeah. to yeah, if you listen to um uh you know, say Big Life, for example, Jack mm. sings Big Life mm. and Color of Your Smile. Mm. Wait, a minute, wait a minute, let me get the let me get the <laughs> record out here. So so on Big Life, Jack sings yeah, Big Life, Color Your Smile. Kelly sings Love is Standing Near. And Jack sings Rain Comes Crashing Down. Okay. Um, and if you listen, actually a good a, a good way to listen to what they sound like in the same song, if you listen to the midsection of the song Restless Kind on Man in Motion, and when it gets to the, you know, yes, I know how the world can fall, you know, can fall apart or leave you down, down, down. Like, and then um that's Jack, but Kelly sings the rest of that song. So oh, there's okay. a little bit of back and forth there. Yeah. And if you listen to Damn Yankees, you can you can cut kind of pick Jack out um, mm, against mm. Tommy Shaw. And then you mm. go back and listen to Night Range, you can kind of hear where it's him. Now, where I agree with you, and it took me a while to figure this out, when Jack sings in a lower register, it's hard to tell him and Kelly apart. But they yeah. really don't sound anything the same. Yeah, yeah. 
no, I guess it's just I just it just doesn't I just don't notice I suppose. But um, and it just be handy just like oh okay who's singing this one? But because I also know too because you know I thought oh well I'll just go on who wrote the songs. But sometimes they both do co-write. That doesn't necessarily yeah because Jack yeah, wrote well, a lot of the songs himself. Also, doesn't sure matter who also, sang them. Yeah, I've also seen I'm I'm sure that Jack's wrote the song, but Kelly's singing it sometimes. So um, yeah. yeah. Anyway, I would recommend um you know for as far as the first three albums, Steve. If you go on YouTube, this whole concert's on YouTube, but they put out a home video in, in 86 called the Seven Wishes Tour. Mm -hmm. You see them live, you get a good idea of who sings what. Oh, yeah, yeah, true. I should do that. Yeah, yeah, it's a good point. Oh, it's a good show. It's yeah, a good yeah. Show. It's a good, yeah. good track list. Yeah. Yeah, actually, um, sort of surprising. Well, you talked about Night Ranger having a live album. Did that? When did that come out? But nothing on Vaughn away, so. Um, no, um, yeah. nothing on that, that live. Actually, um, that live in Japan, because they were bigger in Japan, that actually came out as a concert video on Laserdisc. Yeah, but okay. um, by the time it came out in the states, they'd broken up, and Jack was in Damn Yankees. But MCA just took the audio of it and put it out as live in oh, Japan. Okay. It's got a pretty cheap looking cover. Yeah, uh, but it's a good it's a good show, and there's a mm. lot of man in motion on it. Mm. They really were trying to support that album, so that's good. Yeah. Uh, and th they've done a few live albums in in the you know more recent years. I just sure. don't know how easy they are fine but uh yeah. the most recent one is the one they did with the contemporary youth orchestra and i'm not a big fan of orchestral albums but i really like this one okay i'd recommend that yeah okay yeah trouble the survivor haven't really this. put out anything other than a million compilations that they probably yeah. didn't even put up themselves yeah yeah there's a lot of compilations but yeah i just think it would have been great even after they broke up like they must have had something recorded live that would i would yeah that would have been really good but um yeah, you, know, you can, you know, all the hits, all a the, lot of the, the songs that songs. ended up on that. Yeah, a lot of the songs that ended up on that Reach album had been around for a long, long time oh, because yeah. some of them are even co-written by Dave Bickler and he didn't sing on that album. So, and that's a good album. That's worth seeking out. That might not be easy to find anymore now either. Is the Reach mm. album, but mm. that was a good album. I wish they'd done more. Mm. Mm. Yeah, no, I heard that through the nineties they they reformed with Dave. And they they were writing songs. I even heard there was a song that they had written for a Sylvester Stallone movie. I think it was called Driven, and but then it ended up not being on the in the movie soundtrack. Um, but uh, anyway, yeah. Um, oh, just just before we finish up, I don't know if you've got this, um, but this is Survivor, the very best of. So there's lots of different covers. They look. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I don't have that. No, so. well, it's. It's been re released with different covers, but as well, I think. But this came out, yeah, Scotty Brothers. Um, yeah, I don't know when this came out. Maybe eighty. Oh, it says eighty six. So um, yeah, it doesn't actually have. Yeah, so this has probably come out prior to um, Too Hot to Sleep. But um, yeah, I got it. I got it because you know you can't. Yeah, just to get um, the burning heart and moment of truth. But um, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting because like the the official like Survivor Greatest Hits, Scotty Brothers put that out in '89, right? And I've got that on vinyl and cassette. But then in '93, Scotty Brothers put out another Survivor Greatest Hits with a different cover, uh, and it's got a few more songs on it. So, is that the ultimate? The best one, is that ultimate? No, song? that I was just going to say the best oh. one to get came out in 2004. Yeah. It's called the Ultimate Survivor because yeah. that's got just about everything that you could and it's it's a long cd too they filled up yeah. the cd CDs. it's even got things like um the original survivor version of the song rocking into the night which ended up being recorded by 38 special and was their first hit it's it's a jim peter and frankie sullivan song and it basically sounds like they erased the vocal and put dave bickler's vocal over the 38 special version that's how close they are right. but it's got rebel girl which was a song that was written um, it was around the time of the first yeah. album, but it didn't make the first album. Yeah. That's on the Rock Candy reissue Rock Candy, of the yeah. debut. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, and and I sh we should say, I mean, yeah, we didn't talk about the debut from 79 and Premonition from 81. Those are good albums, too, but mm. they got they only got better. They got mm. better and better. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and I'll just finish up, because I showed the Survivor Greatest Hits, uh, or Best of it. Yeah, so I've got a Night Ranger Greatest yeah. Hits as well, but the thing is, there's also nothing. Also came out in '89. Yeah, this is nothing exclusive. Yeah, it's just it's all it's nothing nothing. There's no yeah. Okay. Now, when you nothing look at new. that album, does it 
could it be any more obvious that they photoshopped that band photo <laughs> on that background? Like that looks like a really early example of Photoshop to me. And also the squished logo. Um, yeah, yeah. And oddly enough, if you get that's got 10 songs on it, the record and cassette have 10 songs on it. If you get the CD, it's got two more songs on it. I think the CD added uh, rumors in the air and Eddie's coming out tonight. So, yeah, there was no, you know, it, I still would like for Universal to put out an, another, a, a better Night Ranger comp and put Girls All Like It. And then another song called Wild and Innocent Youth, which they did for the soundtrack of the movie Out of Bounds. Like there are oh, songs yeah. floating around out there that have yeah. never belonged to an album that you right. know the diehard fans we we want all that stuff. Sure, absolutely, yeah, yeah. All right, well, so there we go. So it actually ends up being four one. Both of us, I think, have gone four one to Night Ranger, which makes it seem like Night Ranger are like uh, a way better band than Survivor, in our opinion. But that's, not, not at all. Just I don't think. Yeah, it's not the case. Um, and I actually I thought it was going to be close. Um, uh, and it is close at times, but I think the school board doesn't necessarily reflect that. It's just that uh, we both probably just prefer Night Ranger that a little bit more. So um, anyway, good discussion. Uh, thanks for coming on, Tim. Yeah, it's, it's some good information there, some good trivia. Hopefully uh, maybe you've learned some things about Night Ranger and Survivor. Um, I'd love to know your opinion on the albums that we've talked about. What's your favorite? Um, I'm sure there's going to be some Survivor fans out there who will be saying, oh, no, it was Survivor beats Night Ranger easily. Uh, and likewise, the other way as well. So, um, yeah, thanks again, Tim. Uh, make sure you check out Tim's channel. Anything you want to talk about that's coming up, Tim? Well, thanks. Yeah, no, I was just uh, continuing the Y&T deep dive, um, going yeah. through that catalog. My Y&T book continues to sell. It's on Amazon. And uh, um, and Steve, of course, is in that. He's one of the many great contributors. And my Unspooled book is still available, both through Amazon. Um, Going to end that one off with a bang. Um, yeah, two episodes a week. And I appreciate everybody's support. And also, I do want to say, for, as far as Night Ranger is concerned, check out their Latter-day albums, ATBPO and Don't Let Up and High Road and Somewhere in California. Those are all fantastic Night Ranger albums. They're not They're not even, hey, that's pretty good for a recent album. No, they're just good. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, they're still putting out good music. Hopefully we get another album from them soon. Unlike, you know, and, and maybe that's one of the reasons is because, you know, Survivor just kind of, you don't think of them because they kind of stopped recording, right? And Night Ranger did not stop recording. So, but both mm -hmm. of these bands are obviously, I think it comes through, we had a hard time picking most of these because mm -hmm. they're both really good bands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, awesome. All right, well, thanks for watching, everyone. Um, if you haven't, uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you like this kind of content, hit the like button, leave your comments, and uh, I'll be back later. All right, thanks. See ya.